It's me, Fun, aka. Right now I'm in Boston, behind Harvard University, and it's fucking hot. Fucking hot right now. And I'm sweating. But I stay under the Asian jeans. That's it. Alright. <laughs> We're at the meetup spot for the first Boston skate that I'm attending. And uh, we're just waiting for it to get started. This is the crew, it's the crowd so far. All right, guys, this is my first Boston skate. So, the if you watched the previous vlog, you would have known that uh, this is actually the second day of the event. We arrived on Friday instead of Thursday due to our scheduling. And uh, this is the first skate of Friday. Uh, yesterday, there was, a, I think, two skates. One that went to, one started at Thurl Shop, and I forgot where it ended. And quite frankly, I'm a terrible tourist, and I wasn't really paying attention. I don't really know where I'm going here. I'm kind of just following the group. And uh, let's get started. So this is actually my first time in Boston. I, I, I don't think I've ever been in Boston before. I may have been here when I was a child, but it's like a faint memory and I might be wrong. But uh, yeah, it was my first time in Boston and our hostel was essentially in their, uh, their downtown and their Chinatown. And we were pretty close to the starting spot. As far as skating, uh, they had a nice like bike lane system. So a good amount of it was in dedicated bike lanes and the road was pretty decent. It was kind of odd because I was warned about like uh, the cobblestone roads and stuff like that. And I barely encountered them. And I was kind of looking forward to that. So this was my first big skate since I like taken it easy on my knee. So it has it's been the longest distance I have done in recent times and like the most consecutive skating I've done. So while I was, while I was on these skates, I carried a, like an over the shoulder bag. It's actually a lumbar pack, but I wear it over my shoulder. And I had like some camera stuff with me and like some water. And quite frankly, it's kind of annoying. It was kind of annoying because it would swing around and the strap would like cut my neck. So then I was forced to hold it the whole time and it was kind of like, it looked like my arm was in a sling. So as far as it being my first time in Boston, it was also my first uh, like go-to skate, you know, where I traveled to another state to skate. Uh, I've participated in the Big Apple Roll, but that's local. I've never like gone to another skate to, I mean, another state to skate. And with you guys who aren't familiar with it, there's a lot of these. So there's a Philly skate, which I think passed already, was a while ago. And there's uh, something called the Avocado Roll, which is the California version of the, of the Big Apple Roll. And there's a lot of these big, like tourist slash social skates that happen uh, once a year. I remember going by this alley and thinking, this is the kind of alley where Bill Stopper would randomly kick some shit for no reason. Oh yeah, most people were riding like larger wheels. Uh, lately, I've been trying to return to my 80 millimeter roots. So I've only been using 80 millimeter wheels and the wheels I'm wearing now are, are, are probably like 78 or something or 76 by now. They're pretty burnt out. I did have that new pair that I showed you guys, but I didn't want to rot. I didn't want to switch them out yet. There was definitely more life in these wheels. So they, they probably weren't ideal for the distance, but uh, I think this gate uh, is only around like, uh, like nine miles or something. So it's pretty short. Uh, so as you can hear, there's obviously no music in this video. I'm just keeping the raw sounds of the street. Luckily, there's not too much wind, 
a lot of the time these 360 cameras just pick up a lot of wind and a lot of the audio is unusable, but it was, wasn't that bad this time. As you can see, Osik is here with me. And here I was actually complaining the sound that his bearings were making. And he's actually using my previous bearings. Uh, I mentioned it before that I gave him, if you saw the other video, I gave him my, my endless setup. And I gave it to him with the wheels and bearings and all. And he's actually using those same wheels and bearings in his uh, and end frames. And they were hissing really loud. They were some really dry bearings. So this dude right here, I never caught his name, but uh, he, was, he, was, he was skating hard the whole time. Like, he was speeding around, doing jumps, doing 180s and stuff. I never caught your name, but if somehow you're watching this video, leave a comment below. There's Alan. He looks so funny when he skates. Like his body's out of sync or something. Like his arms aren't moving with his legs. It's, it's pretty funny to watch. He's gotten better at skating though. I, th I think we're gonna have a clip here where he like bust out a power slide or something. So as far as hills, I'd say that the route, this first route, was was pretty flat. There was some uphills, obviously we have some now, but it wasn't too bad. See, you can see it looks like my hand's in a sling. And it's because I have to hold the bag down, which is full of a good amount of stuff. So if I don't hold it down, it swings and then the strap burns my neck. I hate carrying all this stuff, but being that I was, you know, traveling somewhere else, I had to carry some extra stuff with me, especially camera related stuff. So yeah, as, as far as Boston, it's pretty nice. It kind of reminds me of like an alternate reality of Brooklyn. <laughs> if it, that sounds funny, but just the way it looks, it, it, it just reminds me of kind of like like if Brooklyn would have been like the main part of New York, like uh, the style and the architecture of the houses. So it's like an, a what if version of, of Brooklyn. That's why I, I got the feel, the feel. So I was pretty chill in all these skates. I wasn't doing anything particularly crazy. I wasn't really speeding. Like I said before, this was the first time, you know, I have skated this long or this hard in a while because my knee had been recovering. So a lot of it was me just skating and just feeling out my knee and seeing how much it could take. Luckily, you know, I, I feared there might be some sort of inflammation in my knee, like after the skate, but uh, my knee held up pretty well. But once again, I didn't do anything too crazy. There he goes, this guy going crazy. He was jumping 360s. He was going so fast, the guy on the left with like the yellow speed shirt and the shorts, he would like lap the group. He would get ahead, run to the back and go forward. It was pretty funny. He essentially did twice the distance everyone else did. You see O there doing some backward skating, some nice, nice footwork. Oh, I, I was watching the whole time. You were definitely doing some cool stuff. So one thing I picked up from uh, being at Boston or just like other cities in general, you know, I spent time in, in Kansas City for, for a while, you know, I was there last year. I've noticed a lot of these cities have like these very spaced out streets. I can't explain it. Like 
multi-lane streets and like you have these like large buildings, but they're pretty far from each other. Uh, versus something like New York, you have like these two-lane streets and then you have these skyscrapers right next to each other. So it kind of just emphasizes like how crazy they look. So yeah, most of these streets, like all these cities I see, they, the buildings seem so much more spaced out. Oh yeah, and this overpass here, uh, we're gonna go over the highway. And, and this gate was so short. Uh, you know, you would never have something like this in New York. You know, we always have like these massive gates preventing people from jumping into the like highway or something. But I was amazed on how low this gate was. So here I let everyone go ahead of me essentially because uh, you know, I do, I do carving to control my speed and it kind of has a wider footprint. And as you can see, most people are doing drag stops. And I find that, you know, like you'll scare people if you're killing speed faster than them and then they're coming towards you and they go into like a panic moment. So most of the time I would rather let people go ahead of me just in case, like, you know, I don't want to stress them out. I don't know how fast they can kill speed and me kind of swerving in front of them might confuse them. So th this part right here was one of the nicest parts of the first gate. Once again, I'm a terrible tourist. They told us where we were and stuff. I was not paying attention. Uh, all I know is that there was like, oh, there's this fast route for the fast people. And then there's like a slow one if you, if you want to go slow. And I obviously took the fast one. <laughs> Yeah, this park was really nice. I don't know where it was, but it was like a little green haven with water around it in the middle of the city. Uh, is anyone here from Boston? I put a comment out before, I didn't get too many replies. Uh, if you're from Boston, leave a comment below. Look at O, look at his push, it's so wide, it's very uh, speed skater-ish. I kept more of like a narrow stride, you know, just because there was some people there, I didn't want to take too much space. And also the floor is a bit messed up, you'll see it, there's these occasional cracks that kind of launch you a little, so. So this video is gonna be on the longer side. It's I think around 25 minutes. I remember seeing a comment and someone's like, oh, you know, you're taking so long, there better be a lot of footage. And uh, I asked the patrons if they want a 360 version of this. Guys, go look at the patron page. Um, if you guys want a 360 version of it, let me know. I've been posting a lot there and I need a little more activity, but yeah. I might make a 360 version of this, which is longer. And uh, if you're wondering why the other one's gonna be longer, I did have more footage, but there's a guy that was here and at the skate, and he was playing lots of music. So every time I was next to him, he's essentially a rolling copyright strike. So all the footage becomes unusable because the uh, YouTube algorithm is surprisingly good at picking up music, so. But yeah, uh, patrons, Look at, look at the post. Let me know if you want a 360 version of this that's extended. go with that that short rail I kind of kicked Michael's foot there scared he was gonna trip and fall over
Here I go again with the carve. Killing my speed, controlling it with a nice carve. I'm ahead of everyone significantly here. But you can see the guy behind me really coming in hot, you know. That's the kind of thing I'm worried about. I'm like killing speed. Someone comes in hot, before, you know, behind me. <laughs> you never know. So a lot of times here, and not with this gate, but uh, definitely like the next day, there were these times where like, I would get ahead of the guy leading, and you know, I have no idea where we're going. And I'd always have to like backtrack to get back to the leader. But uh, some of the turns weren't too, weren't too obvious, like I didn't know he was turning and they felt very last second, and I don't think I lost because of it. Like over here, I'm confused, where are we going? I bust out a power slide, and I catch a little crack. Luckily, just roll right over it. We had some New Yorkers here with us, a good amount. Uh, if you're here and you see yourself, give yourself a shout out. <laughs> So initially I was wearing sunglasses and like I got rid of them and like you could see it in the video the the difference between like the shade and like the light like the sun is just so harsh so most of this video I'm like squinting really hard I kind of understand why like Bill Stopper is always wearing sunglasses now Oh so this is pretty funny this dude was ready to go under the sign and then they opened the gate right on him Yeah, I told him they, they ruined his moment. It was going to be so cool going under it, and then they lifted it. There's the uh, rolling copyright strike guy. You know, I approach him, and then, you know, I essentially have to end the clip. Luckily, he was playing, like, like these really weird remixes that, like, you know, I, I've never heard before. So maybe they won't get picked up, but as you saw there, this dude was, like, rolling around, music blasting. It's always an obstacle when you're like vlogging like actual events with people, you know, like a lot of my stuff isn't staged, I don't set things up, it's kind of just, I record as it is, these events, and there's a lot of music, and it, uh, it makes it harder to make a video, because I have to like do a lot more editing, I have to remove audio, and then if I remove audio, I have to find music, and it just makes it all the more challenging. Look at this dude right here, putting in the moves. We're talking about how these like little curves are angled to the nice little launch pads. They're pretty nice to hit. Didn't really hit them though because like I said, my, my knee's a little beat up so I was just chill the whole time during this gate.
So I find that I'm pretty bad with a selfie stick. As you guys know, I, I generally don't like them. And because like the, the dynamic of the channel has changed recently, it was more of like me documenting or being with a group. Most of the time I was the cameraman, wasn't really in front of it. But in recent times, you know, I've been in front of the camera more and I've used like a selfie stick format, which I, I honestly just don't like. In events like this, uh, you know, you're surrounded by a lot of people. I don't really like selfie sticks. You know, so I take up a larger footprint. You gotta take the stairs. I'll take the steep side. I think I'm gonna take the steep side. I'm not gonna bomb it. I just wanna carve something, you know, good exercise. So I'm gonna check out this steep side. So yeah, here there were two options. Go downstairs or go down this kind of like sharp turn. And the only problem with the turn is that it goes right into an intersection. Like it wasn't too sharp, but there was a lot of traffic and it went right into a red light. As you can see here, some hard carving. And I had no idea where we were going. You'll see here, like, I don't know, left or right. I just went wherever. There's this guy with uh, the rolling copyright strike with the weird remixes. Oh yeah, I just I just pretty much hit Michael with the selfie stick. That's what I was talking about before. It's it's a lot longer than you think, and sometimes I forget where it is. That clip was pretty long. Hopefully, I don't get a copyright strike for it. So I'm going to use this time right now to uh, thank my viewers in general and in particular my patrons. So I usually have like the outro thing that does most of it, but uh, I want to thank Xfing, HP, Jom, Sonic, uh, Sonic Skates, and uh, goodnightjournal.com. Uh, thank you for all the support, especially lately. I've been dealing with a lot and uh, that extra help helps. Uh, for you guys who aren't patrons, I've actually recently started a Discord. So I try to get on it at least once or twice a week. I usually post and I'll work on videos. And, you know, uh, if you want to, you can join me and uh, give input, make a little skate chat. So here, um, we're getting close to the end of the, of the skate. I like this skate because it was a round trip. And from a tourist perspective, uh, it's good to have round trips because I don't exactly know where I am. And the, some, 
the next day we had a skate that wasn't necessarily like a round trip. And it kind of like left you middle of nowhere, kind of. And I wasn't really a fan of that. Uh, but because of it, I, I got to take like the Boston train, which they call the T and their bus. I guess it forced me to like see the city a little more. But, you know, I like round trips, especially from a, from a tourist perspective. Oh, yep, this is the end of the first skate. There's actually two skates in this day, and the second skate will be another episode. Once again, uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys next time. Okay.